Good morning, everybody, or I should say good afternoon. This is the Real Faith Podcast, and it is June 16th. The Real Faith Podcast, what it is, is basically a podcast that is talks about and addresses the real core issues in Christianity today, and particularly where we are at as Christians. Um, we're going to get into a lot of things here because, as you've noticed, it's been a while since I've posted a podcast, and there's a reason as to why that is. Um, I had to find out a lot of truth um, regarding where our current status is in the world via Christianity. And um, before I come on air and, and start spewing at the mouth all these things, um, I wanted to really affirm where we were. And the way that it was done was actually the way God did it because um, he got me into a program. It was sort of like a YWAM discipleship program. And we basically heard a bunch of speakers that came in and would address um, you know, all kinds of topics in Christianity. And basically, I would say four or five into it, it was enough confirmation for me to say, yep, I was right all along. Although my hunch was via the Holy Spirit. And that was that we are in dire times for Christianity today. The truth is, is that Christianity is not only a dying religion, but it's hardly a known religion. What I mean by that is that nobody appeals to Christianity in a way that's literal. Um, you even have college professors that are on YouTube that go, you shouldn't listen to the Bible like it's literal, or you shouldn't pay attention it's like literal. Well, I can tell you this much. I'm a theology student, and we say the Bible every single day. Um, there is a point at to which you ask yourself, if you don't look at the Bible as literal, what do you look at it as? I mean, consider the fact that um, was God's word God's living word before you got into theology? Was God's word a living word before you started studying all these other different theories and ideas regarding God's word? Yes, it was. And it's going to continue to be afterwards. And so the point is that there is not a given single time where you can just say that the Bible is but just this Old Testament to New Testament narrative, grand narrative about a love story. No, it's so much more than that, right? The Bible itself is a metaphysical book. It could be considered, it's like a magical book, some people would say, right? But the, the reality is that it's God's living word that if applied, and I mean if applied daily, as though your life is on it, you're going to see truth come up around you in ways that you've never thought before. If you were to read Proverbs, for instance, for 30 days, you would notice that if you read Proverbs a day for 30 days, as you continue to rehearse Proverbs in your head, you look for certain patterns in your daily basis, your daily reality, whatever you're doing. I don't know what you're doing today, but let's say you're going off to work, okay? Put Proverbs in your head for work and consider everybody in the workplace in regards to Proverbs and watch how evil, wickedness, and darkness basically exposes itself around you by wicked speech, by uh, lack or careless lifestyles, by lack of meaning in life, by no sense of motivation to go anywhere or do anything. You will literally see it alive all around you because today, when you go outside, you see this bright, beautiful day. You see this wonderful world that God has created in the sense of like the mountains, the trees, um, and you, you look at the landscapes and it's so serene. And yet you, then you get to a, a, a workplace or you get somewhere else and you realize that why can't the people around you, why can't the society around you match that serenity? What is wrong with our thinking in regards to us deciding, you know, that we know what is what? Um, I only say that because the Bible speaks a lot about the condition of our heart. And Jesus really speaks upon the condition of our heart. I'm going to jump into this right now. In this way, Matthew 5.13 says, You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. 
In the same way, let your sh light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Jesus talks about this idea that you are the light. And when you're emitting this light, the only way you can but be a light is via what you say and your actions. And so it's a lot in regards to the tongue. And James says a lot about the tongue. It says to tame the tongue in it. And in fact, if you can't even tame the tongue, that you actually, in fact, can't, your religion is almost worthless if you can't tame the tongue. Because you can read the Bible, memorize it, know it all you want, but if you can't tame your tongue, then you might as well not go out and say anything. Because if you say anything, then you're misrepresenting Jesus and you're misrepresenting biblical uh, knowledge and in, in, in what it is God wants us to do, how he wants us to be represented out here, right? How he wants us to represent him, right? So Matthew 5, 8 says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. And I got to say, guys, that, you know, there is a huge thing in Christianity today where I think a lot of people believe Christianity is like this external movement where it's like there's something that's outside of yourself where you label yourself as a Christian and so now you're set apart and then you think that set apartness actually means that you are now against your neighbors where in fact Jesus said to love your neighbors and in fact Jesus has never looked down at anybody and so constantly the Bible actually tells us that despite how much you are technically set apart. You're not really set apart in the sense that you get to govern your own setting apart. You're more set apart in a holy way to make sure the condition of your heart is the right way um, versus other people. And setting apart does not mean you label yourself as something that is different from somebody else. And if you do that, you're more likely to create enemies um, in a sense that is not a Christian way, not the Christ-like way, so to speak. Okay, so what do I mean by this? Okay, so in the context of John 4.24, we have this, or this is 4.23. But a time is coming and has now come when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such as these to worship him. God is spirit and his worshipers must worship him in spirit and in truth. So what that suggests, guys, is that God is, is a spirit, right? And we understand this in the terms of the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit dwells in us. All, these, all this time that you're setting yourself apart, it's not this external setting apart. In fact, the Bible actually tells us that judging something in, in the sense of saying that it's good or evil based off of its appearance um, is, is us judging what good and evil is. And that's actually an evil act in itself. And I say that and in the Bible, Jesus says that nothing externally is evil, right? It's from what comes from man's heart. And so all this time, Christianity has been seen as this idea where to become a good Christian, we're appeasing God. But God is in spirit, so God is in your heart. So you're trying to appease a spirit that lives inside of you. And what I don't understand is how much we have gone off of and we've distorted this truth. That this peace, that this love, that this this harmonious relationship with Christ is supposed to be, you know, from this inward, inner sense of us outwardly towards others and like Matthew said that we are a light right in the Matthew in the book of Matthew the parable of being the light you're the light you always have been and so when somebody goes hey you know God has always loved you there's a reason why I think we kind of gawk at this or we kind of say eh, I don't know if that's true or not because you're thinking about this idea that there's like this external God and it's not really like that. It's an internal God, internal spirit. So when you're saying, well, God will always love you. Well, of course God will always love you because God lives inside of you. And he can't not love you as he's living inside of you. But now we get this idea of a so much more interpersonal relationship with Jesus. And we ask ourselves, why is it that, you know, there's no 
really such thing as like a certain group, so to speak, that's more Christian than another. I mean, it can't be like that because God's spirit sees us all as equal. And so what I get to today is the bottom line of uh, Christianity. And this is what real-time faith is. These are just some of the questions we're going to poke around with and we're going to kind of address. Um, with that being said, we're going to go into some of the current statuses of today where most Christians find themselves today. And I want to basically end this note off by saying most Christians don't find themselves today. In fact, more likely than none, you're going to come across many Christians today who do not know their scripture fully, who do not know the Ten Commandments fully, who don't abide in the Ten Commandments, not because the Ten Commandments still stand over Christ, of course not, but the sense of the intuitive sense of the Ten Commandments uh, by abiding in what Jesus initially had laid out as parameters to follow by. And if we can't even follow those, we really ought to see where Christianity is today. This is a channel that's going to address truth. It's going to address a lot of the current um, chaotic thinking regarding uh, Christianity and just how far off I think a lot of us are really when it comes to interpreting scripture because after some time now being in, in theology uh, school but also trying to put you know certain pieces together I've come to the conclusion in listening to some of the greatest speakers now in Christianity that when they tell me they go across to universities all across the United States they say that majority of the college students the the word doesn't click with them that the teachings of Jesus that don't click with them that they are hearing but they're they're not hearing right and Jesus said those who have ears listen um, and so there's a massive amount of space that is empty and it's void of Christ's true spirit. And I think it's what's impacting our Christianity today. I think it's what's impacting our ability to connect in full worship today. And I think it's uh, affecting our capability to see God as something so much more than we can possibly comprehend in our day-to-day -day basis. Uh, you know, so that being said, guys, I look forward to continuing this series with you guys and digging deeper. Uh, this was just sort of like a, a beginning clip, so to speak, that is of what's to come. I appreciate it and God bless.